Reverse T3 is cleared through the D1 pathway. You mentioned there are three deiodinases. The D1 is very important in clearing reverse T3 from the circulation. And the interesting thing is that D1 is richly expressed in the liver, very sensitive to insulin and carbohydrates. If you eating a lot of carbohydrates, your D1 in the liver is going to go up and the opposite when you don't eat so much. So what's happening is D1 activity is coming down in the liver because you're not eating. Insulin down, carbohydrates down. And because D1 metabolizes reverse T3, reverse T3 builds up in the blood. So not only there's more reverse T3 production, but there's also less reverse T3 metabolism. And so that's why reverse T3 goes up. T3 is down just because it's not being produced so much. And your energy expenditure is going down. So it's common to see individuals that fast that in the first few days, they lose significant amount of body weight. But then it reaches a plateau. And a, a lot of people, some studies attribute this plateau to the fact that the thyroid hormone levels are down because you you are equating the amount of calorie you're intaking with the with your energy expenditure. You're reducing it. And so, is that ratio, which some people have talked about, the ratio of reverse, uh, pardon me, of free T3 to reverse T3, that rising level of that ratio, is that a poor man's proxy of aggregate thyroid activity in the body, or is that just too coarse a manner to look at it? 